The next topic we're going to cover here is what are some of the conflicts that arise between the C++ design goals and other goals of modern software development? And I would be remiss if I didn't address this issue head on, because this is one of the reasons why C++ is uh, sometimes viewed with some skepticism by people because they believe that it's a bit out of step with modern software development practices. I don't subscribe to that view, but I do think you have to go into C++ with eyes wide open in order to use it effectively. So what's the issue? Well, the issue here is that some of the design goals we talked about, particularly the ones about efficiency and backward compatibility, tend to conflict with modern perspectives on how you build software. So one example, uh, and this is not so much a software engineering point of view, but just even a compiler optimization point of view, as you no doubt noticed in C, and therefore in C++, it's possible to do a lot of things with pointers. And the problem, of course, is when you start using pointers, especially what I call raw pointers or naked pointers, you make it difficult for the compiler optimizer to figure out how to optimize the code because the pointer could point to just about anything in memory. And that makes lots of things like register allocation and garbage collection and other forms of runtime management very, very tricky and unsafe. So sometimes people just throw up their hands. The minute someone takes the address of something in a C++ program, the optimizer turns off a bunch of optimizations because it knows it's unsafe. Um, now, as it turns out, the, the way to solve this problem is to use the C++ containers like vectors and so on. And therefore, you don't actually have pointers in your code. The pointers are hidden deep in the bowels of the library. And so by confining it and bounding it that way, the optimizer has greater leeway in your code to optimize the heck out of it. And oftentimes, the compilers can be taught things about the standard containers as well to be able to optimize them more effectively too, even though they use pointers in a limited way. Another tricky issue is that the C++ model of separate compilation is inherited from the C model of separate compilation. And when you compile things, they're really compiled sort of independently, independently of each other. So it's kind of like there's a wall between them. It's the great wall of, of uh, shared, shared objects or DLLs. And this makes it difficult to do certain kinds of analysis that might skip across or skip through the different method calls in different libraries or different DLLs or different shared objects. There's ways of getting around this, but most compilers don't support that. And it's also very tricky because of the semantics of how you link things together in languages like C and C++. So those things actually kind of conflict with the goal of making the code as optimized as possible. Other conflicts have to do with modern perspectives on how to ensure the quality of software. So again, anytime you can dynamically allocate memory and have to manage it explicitly, that is just a recipe for disaster. Uh, there's a funny little, little meme here that says, uh, it shows a picture of Bill Gates and it says, if only he had a nickel for every time that Windows crashes. And then it says, oh wait, never mind. Um, now, to be fair, Windows is much, much more stable these days. But there was a time when it was full of bugs and full of blue screen of death problems. And a lot of those problems stem from dynamic memory management. So this, of course, is why there's a C++ guideline that says don't use new and delete explicitly, but instead encapsulate those things behind factory methods like make unique and holder classes like unique pointer or vectors and other types of containers. So just be aware that if you start finding yourself compelled to write code with, with naked pointers or raw pointers, you're just asking for trouble. This is largely fixed in best practice by using things like uh, the C++ standard template library. Um, for example, here's a classic way of solving this problem, not the only way, but a very common way, is by using something called the resource acquisition is initialization idiom, which basically says, have the constructor acquire the resource and hold it, and when the destructor is called, delete it. So here's a very simple example you can find if you go to that link at the bottom of the page. That's going to be a method called write to file, where you give it a string, a const, a ref that you want to write to the, to the output. And it's going to contain a standard 
mutex, which is just a synchronizer, kind of like synchronized in Java. We make this static so it exists when the program starts. And then when we come into this method, we use something called a lock guard, which uses the scoped locking idiom. And it goes ahead and it acquires the lock. And then you open the file and you write the file. And then when you leave the scope of this method, the file gets closed, even if an exception is thrown, and the mutex will be unlocked regardless of whether an exception is thrown. So these scope locking techniques and this resource acquisition is initialization techniques and idioms are very effective to deal with dynamic memory management, if you follow them. <laughs> if you don't follow them, then oh well. Um, and the other thing that's incredibly valuable, and I hope we'll get a chance to do some of this in our class, is using memory checking tools, memory bounds checking tools like Valgrind. There are other ones available too, of course, but Valgrind works on, on Linux machines and it will tell you if you leak memory, it'll tell you if you corrupt memory, and using these kinds of tools are really, really important if you're writing C++ code, or C code for that matter, because they help you avoid these kinds of problems. Okay, so that's the end of our discussion about C++ design goal conflicts. Um, I don't want you to think I am not a fan of C++. I love C++, but uh, as, as Bjorn Strustrup, the inventor of C++, once said, C++ makes it hard to shoot yourself in the foot but when you do, you're likely to blow your leg off. And so that's kind of a reminder that we have to be very diligent in how we apply best practices, how we apply patterns and idioms, how we apply tools, static analysis tools, dynamic analysis tools, to help avoid these traps and pitfalls and sharp edges and dark corners in C++. So throughout the rest of the class, we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about how to do that.